Tim, thank right. you so much for thank you so much for joining um, this week's Zeke from Home and for uh, agreeing to take a deeper look into the the 3.0 release. But for those who maybe haven't met you at a Zeke event yet or talked to you in, in the Slack channel, can you tell folks a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Tim Wojtulowicz. I work for Corelight. Um, I work entirely on the open source side of Zeke. Um, I've been there since, uh, I've been there about a year now. Uh, it'll be a year next week. Um, I have in my time here, I've taken apart the IO loop and put it back together again. I have uh, authored a whole lot of um, code quality improvements, uh, modernization efforts. Um, Amber asked me today to uh, dive into Zeke 3.0 a little bit. Um, we've seen a little bit of trend lately of people upgrading from fairly ancient versions of Zeke uh, up to 3.0 and having uh, a bunch of questions about uh, kind of what's changed and, and things like that. Uh, most of the content, most of the content of this uh, presentation is uh, listed out in the in the release notes. I'm going to try to go a little further into some of the things. I don't, as a person who's only been here about a year, I, I don't have context on a lot of the th things that were changed prior to my arrival. Uh, but I will try to answer questions as they come up. Um, feel free to raise your hand in Q and A as we go along, and then I will I'll try to answer it. Uh, if I don't have an answer, obviously um, <clears throat> there are people who do. Uh, bring it up in Slack if you've got a, a deeper question about how something works, and we can certainly get your questions answered. Um, as a as a first comment, um, historically, the way that Bro Bro and now Zeke releases happened were it was kind of whenever the team felt like, yeah, we've made enough progress. Um, we probably should do a new release now. Or, yeah, we fixed this giant bug. We probably should do a new release to put that out. Um, the problem with that is that it was really unpredictable. And you would end up with large gaps in between releases. For example, there was a three-year gap between Bro 2.5 and 2.6. Um, surprisingly, there was a very much smaller gap between 2.6 and 3.0. Uh, and the plan going forward is to uh, do a full-on LTS release, so a dot .o release, about every year. Um, so we had Zeke 3.0 in September of 2019. We're targeting September-ish for a Zeke 4.0. Um, we should have a Zeke 3.2 in the nearish future. I I think we were saying July. I'm not entirely, don't quote me on that. I think that was the targeted date. Um, in between the .o releases, we're targeting to do a one to two um, point releases. Now these point releases are development releases. They are stable, but not necessarily stable to the point that um, features won't change in them. Um, for example, the IO loop stuff changes and, and, and requires plugin changes and things like that to function. Um, they are kind of, the, the point releases are kind of moving Zeke forward. And then you'll get an LTS release that includes all of everything since, since the last point .0 release to that, to that point is moving things forward. Um, the big change in Zeke 3.0 was the big rename. Um, this is the point at which we renamed from Bro to Zeke. Uh, all of the executables change their names. All the install paths change their names. All the script files change from .bro, bro, bro, .bro to .zeke. Um, broker topic names are now prefixed with Zeke slash instead of Bro slash. On top of that, though, we did have a deprecation system. All of the previous names still exist. But if you use them, you'll get a warning from the from the script from a script that basically says, "Hey." You know, this name, this this executable name is now deprecated. You really should be using these other other names. Um, this is the big change, and in 3.1, which I'll talk about a little later, all of those deprecation warnings go away. So um, Zeke is now Zeke. There is no bro anymore. Um, all of the every everything changes for officially. And once once three once you install 3.1. 
um, like I talked about before, um, everything that was marked as deprecated in 2.6, and there is a long list. I couldn't put it all here. If you look at the patch notes, it, it's it's a, it's probably a couple of pages of things that got that, that got removed because they were deprecated in 2.6. Um, that's the way that dot elders has worked. Uh, on top of that, a number of type and variable attributes were removed. I, I should have probably made a note of what of what they are. Um, it's it's things that didn't make sense in context of a of a, a global variable, for example, or a table or something like that. Also, on top of that, support for um, POF fingerprinting was removed. We were using an old version of POF and it honestly didn't really work anyways. And uh, it was more confusing for users to, for it to continue to be there than to just take it out. New deprecations in 3.0 are things that we missed in, in 2.0 when we were, or things that we missed previously. So bro init, bro, bro done, bro script loaded events, um, some functions there, and then uh, escaping in um, strings changed slightly. So we deprecated the stir shell escape function and replaced it with safe, safe shell quote. Um, stir shell escape still exists, but it's marked deprecated and we should definitely migrate to the new one. Uh, scripting language changes. Uh, there are some new features in scripting languages. For example, you can now loop over tables uh, using a key value pair. So instead of getting a key from a loop and then having to look up the key in the table, your looping just gives you each key and each value in a, in a basically a pair, what would be a pair in C++. Um, vector slicing was added. So sim similar to how Python does vector slicing, similar to how we were doing string slicing before, where you could take a string and only get, you know, a middle section of it out um, with a with a bit of syntax uh, that now exists for vectors also. Um, Paraglob padding ma pattern matching. Uh, Paraglob is a new system uh, for very very quickly matching a set of patterns against a string. Um, it's it's really kind of slick stuff. Uh, it's it's very very fast. Um, what would previously you would have to match each pattern individually, uh, you now basically stick the patterns as a set into, into a paraglob and match once on top of the paraglob and it'll match all of them at once. I see a question from Hank. If I want to apply machine learning on Zeek logs, what's the best way or at which stage should this be done? Uh, I honestly don't have a good answer for you. Um, I see Justin in the chat. Uh, you might you might ask on this on Slack. I, I honestly, I'm uh, admittedly less of a user in uh, Zeek than a, a programmer. I, I have never actually set up a Zeek cluster myself beyond what I need for work. Uh, I honestly don't look at logs that much. Um, I see Justin just popped into our, into our video. Do you want to answer that question, Justin? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've messed with some machine learning stuff. Often you can just do it on the logs after you export them. Like I was messing around with using like TensorFlow and scikit-learn, just importing the JSON data. And from that point on, the fact that it came from Zeek isn't super relevant. Like, you know, TensorFlow and scikit-learn, it, it's just data. So there might not be many examples of using machine learning with Zeek logs, but if you really just find any example of using, say, machine learning with any sort of JSON log, all the same techniques apply. I was using like the SSH logs to try to find like anomalies and things like that. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that helps. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, on top of the, the three I mentioned before, um, anonymous functions uh, now feature um, uh, capturing the local environment when you create them. Um, so uh, variables that were defined in uh, that were defined in the scope at which you created the anonymous function. Those variables are now available to the anonymous function. Um, and lastly, uh, we had added case-insensitive pattern matching 
um, previously. Uh, those are now also supported in, in signature files instead of just in scripting. Analyzer changes, there were a lot in 3.0. Uh, we added some more DNSSEC records. Uh, we added support for DNS SPF and NF log and MQT protocol and VXLAN tunnels. Um, we added some support for some more TLS 1.3 extensions that we didn't support before. Um, we removed a couple of analyzers that weren't being used by anybody. Uh, the one big one that I, I don't have a whole lot of context was uh, context for was uh, support for NTP was completely rewritten. Um, basically, the old plugin is gone, the new plugin is there. Uh, it adds support for um, a bunch of different levels that we didn't support previously. Um, and I can link you to uh, a change log for NTP if you really want to see it. It's, it's pretty lengthy. Um, we continue to add more analyzers as they come in. Obviously, um, the package system um, exists for Zeek and uh, the community adds packages, new packages all the time to it. Um, JSON output is another big hit in this uh, release. JSON output was completely rewritten also. Uh, previously, we had um, basically handwritten a JSON library and it effectively just built a string up from the, from, you know, went through each value and built a string up. This ended up outputting JSON that didn't necessarily meet any sort of standard, uh, if any, any sort at all. Um, so we scrapped all of that, uh, introduced um, a JSON library from N. Lohman uh, that allows us to build JSON in a standard format, um, output JSON in a much more standard format. Um, the JSON output is a lot cleaner. Um, JSON, um, you know, formatters and things like that, that, that will check for um, formatting mistakes in your JSON. It should all pass on all of those. Um, there was a minor issue with performance when 3.0 just, when 3.0 came out originally. Um, we kind of made improvements to that to the point that it is faster than the uh, 2.6 releases. 3.1, uh, we swapped the Enloman library for Rapid JSON, and it got another order of magnitude faster from there. So um, if you're looking at JSON output um, and you are struggling a little bit with, uh, with the performance of the JSON formatters, you might give 3.1 a try and just see if it performs any better for you. Um, along with all of this work, uh, the two JSON function in script land is now a BIF instead of a script, and the JSON.zeek file is now officially deprecated. Um, the code in it doesn't do anything, it's just marked deprecated now. Uh, some other changes uh, here and there, um, these didn't fit into the other nice categories. Um, new functions for added for duration thresholds, similar to how packet and thresholds worked before. Uh, if you look in the change log or in the change log for 3.0, you can find the names for those. Um, this is one of Seth, uh, Seth's favorites is uh, you can now enable UTF-8 in your log files, which means you can happily write emoji to your log files. Um, smiley faces do actually work. The poop emoji does actually work. Um, and this one came up in Slack the other day, or actually yesterday morning, I believe. Uh, the catch and release and unified two scripts are no longer loaded by default. Uh, there were some significant performance issues with the drop action, I guess. Um, and so the decision was made just to disable those by default. If you need them, they, are, they do still exist and you can still load them in. Uh, just know that uh, there will be some performance hits for using them. Uh, like I said before, uh, actually, I don't think I mentioned this before. In between the 3.0 and 4.0 releases, we do the, 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 the 0.1 and 0.2 releases, which are development releases. We also do 0.0 dot releases, which are uh, bug fixes, um, security patches. Um, if you are on a 3.0 release, it's always recommended to update. 
Um, the 3.01 release, uh, the 3.01 wasn't huge. 3.02 included a raft of um, memory safety changes, giant set of memory safety changes that make that make Zeek considerably more stable um, and a little more secure. Um, 3.04, which came out about a month ago, included a, a big bug, a big security fix in the top three analyzer. Um, we're putting out .0 or the, the patch releases kind of just whenever, again, kind of whenever we feel like we've got something major that needs to go out for those. I think we're up to 3.05 just came out last week, the week before last. I can't remember exactly the time. Like I said, if, if you're on the .dot.o release and you have the ability to upgrade to the to the next point release, it's probably worth doing. Um, there, we only put them out when we find something that that is significantly fixed and and would be useful to users. Um, from there, we go on into from 3.0, .o, we go on into 3.1. .dot.o one. Um, 3.1 is the first of the of the development releases, obviously. It came out, I had a date earlier, I don't remember. Um, this is the big, like, these are the big development changes. Um, Supervisor is a new framework for replacing Zeek control. Um, eventually, Zeek control is going to go away. I think we're targeting 4.0 for Zeek control to go away. I don't know exactly. Um, again, don't quote me on that. Uh, the new IO loop stuff uh, is in 3.1, uh, provides a bunch of um, CPU performance improvements, especially on low traffic networks. You're not sucking up CPU doing nothing. A lot more deprecation removals, obviously. Uh, the rapid JSON stuff that I talked about earlier. Uh, and we moved from C, C++ 11 up to C++ 17 um, internally, um, just language features. We have the we have the compiler support um, on all of our platforms that we are we are supporting. Um, in the nearest future, I think some of the platform support is going away. Debian 9 end of life in July, I believe. Um, Fedora 30 ends of what end of life sometime in that time frame also. So um, we will announce those we'll announce those platforms as they're as they're being deprecated away as well. That's really all I have. Uh, there's a link um, to the release notes if you want to go read through them. The 3.0 release notes are probably five, six pages long. Um, Amber will include a link to these slides um, along, with the, along with the video once it's been processed um, and you can get through it from there. Um, that page also you can move uh, up a level and go look at the other point releases if you want to see what's included in them. And that's all I've got for this e this morning afternoon for some of you. Uh, under questions. Tim, thank you so much. Um, for people who might have missed some of these announcements while we're waiting on questions. Um, for folks who might have missed some of the announcements or the call for input. Where would you say is the best place for people to watch for those um, announcements and make sure that they see make sure they see them first? Um, release announcements are always announced in Slack pretty much instantly after their after release is done. Um, the mailing list, uh, I think the main mailing list, uh, John posts something into the mailing list right as soon as the release happens as well. Um, we're, we're, we're pretty good about putting out a, a notification that a release has occurred about as quickly as we can after after it's been tagged. So um, the build the build system that Johanna manages uh, lags behind a release notice of about four hours. So a release notice goes out and then builds are available. Um, binary builds are available about four hours after that for varying platforms. That, I don't have a full list of all of the platforms she builds. It's, it's long. So for those who are on the on the call, 
Um, if you do have questions, you can raise your hand. There's a little button um, at the bottom. If you click on participants um, at the very bottom, you can click on raise your hand and I can unmute you and you can um, ask him your question. Is there anything that maybe you had a question about with 3.0 that Tim didn't touch on that you would like to know more about? All right, let me, let me stop the recording. Um, that way, um, if there is questions and maybe you don't want your questions recorded, uh, wait, we have a question. Uh, are all the documentation updated? Uh, yes, documentation should be updated on this on the, the um, docs.z.org as soon as um, as soon as it's happened. Um, as <laughs> a couple of questions about um, about the supervisor framework. I want to say John did a blog post a while a, a month or so ago about the supervisor framework. Amber, do you? Remember? Um, let me look it up right now while you're continuing to answer questions. Um, John, uh, I'm pretty sure John did a blog post about the supervisor framework and kind of what the what the forward looking plan was for it. Um, the The overall gist of it is that instead of having a separate process manage um, manage the workers, basically the Zeke. Um, the Zeek manager, like the, the, the main node, the, the master node will manage all of the workers um, itself and start and stop processes as it needs to. Um, I, it, it's, it's not something I have spent a whole lot of time working on directly. So beyond, beyond adding the IO loop support into it. Um, so I, I don't have a whole lot of detail about it, unfortunately. If, uh, if there wasn't a blog post, I can get, I can get, um, I can check with John. I, I know John had written something up. Maybe it was never shared publicly. We will. It, it might be on the mailing list and we can check on that as well. I can include yeah. it. Um, if, if it's there, I'll include it in the links. Um, in the I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask John, I'll ask John about it after this and, and we'll, we'll get some, we'll get something out about it. Um, I know in the, in the release notes for 3.1, there is a little blurb about what it does and how it does it. So you might look at those release notes. All right. And I'll make sure that um, when we share all this, that anything that was referenced, um, we'll, we'll make sure the links are also in the uh, blog post that we share. Um, so is there anything else? Uh, anyone has any questions about? Like I said, let me stop the recording for just a second or stop it and then see and just unmute everybody and we'll see if everybody wants to talk. 